Anti-government protesters in Bahrain have faced tear gas and stun grenades as hundreds of people attempted to block a key highway. Witnesses say some have been taken into custody. The demos against the ruling regime began nearly 18 months ago, with activists claiming they face daily discrimination from the Sunni monarchy. Let's now talk to Patrick Henningsen, geopolitical analyst at the Current Affairs UK Column website. Patrick, thanks for taking the time to be with us. Now, the conflict in Bahrain looks to be escalating, but it's sort of largely glossed over by international media in favor of, say, maybe Syria. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, the the situation in Bahrain is uh, this is is very different than Syria. Uh, in Bahrain, what you have is a genuine uh, uprising, a genuine political movement, a potential revolution boiling, and it's being completely ignored for two reasons. The main reason is Bahrain hosts the United States Fifth Naval Fleet. It's a very important strategic piece on their chessboard especially in terms of looking towards uh, potential aggression against Iran. So as Bahrain has a royal family, they completely have the society locked down because the fifth fleet's there. There's no way that the U.S. will want uh, any kind of a, a democratic uprising in that country because it will make the government's policy unstable towards hosting a U.S. military presence in the country, which they need so badly. Now, protesters say they are suffering from abuses in Bahrain. Why are international bodies like the U.N. not trying to stop what's going on? Well, the, the arrest and the uh, recent imprisonment of uh, the Bahraini human rights activist uh, Nabil Rajab, uh, and who's probably being tortured right now as we speak, this has gone completely uh, un, untalked about in the, in the media. And, you know, so there's a double standard here. Um, the, the, the difference between Syria and Bahrain is that S Syria refuses to be an outpost for international uh, Western imperialism, and Bahrain is an outpost for that. So maybe Hillary Clinton should be having Friends of Bahrain meetings to, uh, to help the Bahraini people, but of course that's not going to happen. Um, the situation in Bahrain is grave if you're on the side of reform. If you're with the royal family, everything's fine. Patrick, how much has Bahrain become a pawn in the power struggle between Saudi Arabia and the U.S. against Iran? Well, you have to remember, Bahrain used to be a province of Iran, and only in, in recent years, as, as recent as the early 1960s, mid-1960s, it gained uh, complete independence. But the, the, the situation in Bahrain uh, is very much mirrored all over the, the region. You have a Shiite majority in Bahrain. And you have a minority kind of Wahhabist uh, ruling family, the Khalifi family, who are in charge. Now, uh, as, as uh, aggression intensifies against Iran from the West, particularly from the U.S. and Israel, you're going to see a lot more of this um, uh, uprising in countries like Iraq, Shiite population. Obviously, Syria has a Shiite population. Lebanon, uh, Bahrain, even parts of Saudi Arabia. And they're going to have a very difficult time keeping this under control. And it, there's going to be more brutal crackdowns from these governments. Now, what about... Bahrain, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just want to ask, what about the international community? I mean, should they interfere, number one? And if so, what should they do to uh, face off this crisis in Bahrain? Well, if the international community had a true moral authority, um, they would intervene in Bahrain, Okay. Um, just like they should have intervened in Egypt when some 1,000 people lost their lives uh, because the brutal Egyptian military government beat down the protests in Egypt last year. Okay, Bahrain, same situation. But the international community does not have a moral authority, and that is the, the crux of the matter. So they should intervene, but they're not. The, uh, Bahrain has had the same prime minister for 40 years. He's the uncle of the king. OK, this is uh, it's, it's kind of a joke, really, to talk about uh, the even handedness that is not present in the Gulf states. And these are all the same Gulf states like Qatar, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, that are funding Al Qaeda in Syria, who are suicide bombing innocent people, ethnic cleansing Christians in Syria. So, again, we have a, a double standard is so obvious to see right now. Anybody in Washington, London, 
uh, and so forth who can't see this double standard or who are trying to um, gloss it over. All or right, being seen uh, as hypocrites, Patrick, right? unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Uh, I'd like to thank you for joining us on RT. Patrick Henningsen, geopolitical analyst. Thank you.